It is good to be precise about the approach taken in relating international to national law. In fact, there are two very obvious perspectives in approaching the matter. One is the international perspective and the other is the national. You might think of these perspectives concretely as a litigant or an adjudicator sitting respectively before an international court or a national tribunal. Clearly, from these two seats, there are two perspectives on the relation between these two bodies of law. If we consider first the international perspective, we might ask, does or could national law have controlling juridical value for deciding a case in an international tribunal? In an international tribunal, of course, international law is certainly at play, otherwise a dispute could not be brought before such a tribunal. To answer our question, you can consider Article 27 of the 1969 Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. It says very simply that a state may not rely on the provisions of its own domestic law as justification for failure to perform under international obligations. There can be no conflict as such between international law and domestic law because national law is a fact and not law from the international perspective. From the international perspective, a national law cannot be relied upon by the tribunal for its decision making. The logic of this is straightforward. If a litigant could authoritatively rely on his or her own national law for the rule to be followed at the international level, national lawmaking could be used to defeat the intention of international lawmaking. Of course, the other mutually bound state parties to the international law would not be happy with this since it would undermine the give and take that has occurred in negotiating the international agreement. Article 27 captures and restates this point. This is not to say that national law cannot be noted or referred to internationally, perhaps for some persuasive purpose. But it is not, it cannot be, a rule of law for application in an international tribunal. We can thus say that from an international perspective, national law is a fact to be observed, but not a rule to be followed. From the international perspective, the primary issue is whether domestic law conforms with international obligations. We can cite, for example, the watershed decision of the Permanent Court of International Justice involving certain German interests in policy Upper Silesia. There, the International Court said that from the standpoint of international law and of the court which is its organ, municipal laws are merely fact, which express the will and constitute the activities of states in the same manner as do legal decisions or administrative measures. Given that national law is merely facts, the court said that it was not called upon to interpret the Polish law as such, but there was nothing to prevent the court from giving judgment on the question whether or not, in applying that law, Poland is acting in conformity with its obligation toward Germany under the Geneva Convention. Thus, we have an example of the application of national law as a fact for consideration by the international court and not as the rule of law to be applied. Again, it is important to understand that when international tribunals look at national laws, they are doing so not to apply them. National laws are used as part of the facts of the case to be decided under international law. There is thus no issue of hierarchy here where both legal orders have a potential validity. The bodies of law from the international perspective have fundamentally different characters. So for example, if we had an international case challenging a national law that prohibited quote international domination close quote of trade unions and made such trade unions vulnerable to immediate dissolution, the International Tribunal would look at how that national law had been applied nationally to determine whether international obligations had been breached. 
the International Tribunal would not be looking at the national law as the law to be applied in the case. To continue with our example, let us assume that national courts in country X that has ratified ILO Convention 87 on freedom of association applied their international domination law to restrict national unions' ability to affiliate at all with international federations. The national law applied in this fashion, treated as a fact by an international tribunal, would likely lead the tribunal to decide that the national law violated ILO Convention 87, Article 5, which states that workers' organizations shall have the right to establish and join federations and confederations, and any such organization, federation, or confederation shall have the right to affiliate with international organizations of workers. As I hope this example makes clear, from an international perspective, national law is fact, not law. In the case involving Upper Silesia, the Court of International Justice said that an international tribunal would not go into a legal analysis of national law save as an incidental and preliminary point, and certainly, as I have just noticed, not to interpret or apply the national law. Again, from the international perspective, national law is always just a fact and never a law. And this is quite different from the relationship between international and national law from the national perspective.